Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Good morning to you and welcome back to the channel and welcome back today to Abu Dhabi Motors, the largest BMW dealership in the world, where I visited recently and had a quick look at the BMW M760 Li, the M division version of the 7 Series. But that just whet my appetite to come back and show you one of the three that are lined up behind me here in significantly more detail because there is so much tech. This thing is absolutely overloaded, gizmo overload, and I want to run through some of the features that it is capable of to show you in a little bit more detail. Things like parking the car and moving it forwards and backwards from the remote control key fob. It has the ability to answer and decline calls by just swiping them or saying, no, I don't want to speak to you right now, in the air between the front seats. There is so much more to show you, so let's check it out in significantly more detail here at Abu Dhabi Motors. If you missed my previous video here for a quick rewind, Abu Dhabi Motors BMW here in Abu Dhabi, the UAE, are basically the absolute best in the business at specifying cars and creating configurations in the most bespoke possible way. Individual colors from BMW, accessorizing them. And well, last time I was here, we had a look at a couple of M760 allies, one in a very bright green, one in one of my favorite BMW colors, San Marino blue. And this time there are three more behind me and we have three more different color schemes to take a look at here today. So you've got bronze chestnut on the left. The car that I'm going to be taking a detailed look at is this one right here in Imola red with a Fiona red interior. And I also particularly like that dark purple with the cream inside on the third car. And then a couple more of the BMW lineup to follow beyond that. But let's walk around this car, talk a little bit about the spec, the details, that side of things, but wait until we get inside and I can start playing with the technology and showing you more of what it has available. So the M760 Li in general comes from BMW M GmbH. It's the top of the line based on the latest 7 Series. The 7 Series itself introduced a couple of years ago, but this really the pinnacle of it with a 6.6 litre twin turbocharged V12, literally a V12. It has 610 horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque. It's all wheel drive, four wheel drive which means not only is it incredibly luxurious it is also spectacularly quick as well and we'll take it for a drive later on and see what it's like out and about on the roads it is really really cool having the three of these lined up here together let me have a quick uh, show to you of the rear of the car because well a lot of customers might find themselves being chauffeur driven around where you have the executive lounge seating so the front seat can move forwards all the way and then this rear backrest folds down for comfort for your feet. You have the digital tablet in the center console that pops out and has a whole host of functionality. You have massaging seats, heated seats, there's a fridge back here, the screens of course, just literally everything you can imagine. And then coming through to the front as well, just to have a quick glance in here if you want to drive the car after all, you know. V12, you probably want to have some fun with that. It actually says V12 completely everywhere you go around the car. You have multiple digital displays for the driver display, also for the central system, and you have this gesture control from sensors in the roof that detect you doing stuff here that we'll show you later on as well. So there is a crazy amount to this, but I think number one would be to take out the key here, which is this almost tablet like um, piece. We will. Well, you can unlock the car or you could leave it locked. The screen will wake up so we can slide it up to unlock it. You can see various bits of information about the car, the lights on, uh, how much fuel does it have, set a time to get the engines running, to start the air conditioning for the next time you want to drive, and then remote control parking. So if you press and hold this button on the side of the key fob, which I should really have done with my finger so that I can do this, you can start the engine from the key fob. Let's give it a start. And we've just turned on a V12 using a key. Well, you can do that, I guess, on some other cars. But look at this. This is where it starts to get really cool. You slide it forwards and the whole car is going to move forwards. Oh, I've come too far away. Good test here. Learning while doing. Slide. And we're rolling. Literally, the whole car is rolling forwards. I kid you not. There's nobody inside it. I'm doing that from the key. And then back we go again. This helps you basically if you want to park the car. Oh, I've, uh, there we go. 
If you want to park it into a garage and there's not room to open the doors, you can do this from the key and then uh, line it up and stop. There we go. That is it. And then let go, stop. This is trippy, really, really trippy. And it also has sensors. So let's say there was an object, it would um, move the steering so that it goes around that. But that's how you park between other cars with no stress at all in the world. If we come round, it's a keyless system, so obviously you can put this in your pocket. Jump in, use the ability to unlock it on the sensors here or lock it as well. Head inside. So we've got the Fiona red interior against the Imola red paintwork, which is awesome. Very nice color scheme for out here. Um, would be perhaps a little bit stronger over in Europe, but out here it makes more sense. Up front, well, start stop button up here. Comes into life. Creature comforts galore. It's kind of surprising we still have to close the doors ourselves, hey? Um, one thing unusual, it's chiming at me, I think, just about seat belts. But you have, I mean, massaging seats, just literally everything you can imagine. Adaptive cruise control, it has sensors galore to ensure that you're the safest possible out on the road. I suppose that's not hugely surprising. One of my favorite is this gesture control. So to turn on the music or raise the volume, you do that. Change radio stations. Turn it back down and off. If let's say you were answering a phone call, you can swipe it to answer it. If you don't want to take the phone call, you do that and it declines the phone call. It can go into the parking mode, so 360 cameras. I think that's a bit of a given here. Um, I think you do uh, into reverse and we can bring those up. There we go. Then you do this and you can take a live view around the car right now. Literally, I kid you not, this is, you know, look at that car driving past. That is live. That is really what is outside the car at this exact moment in time how ridiculous is all of this so automatic gearbox put it back into park so i don't end up accidentally reversing here is in traditional bmw style the ability to go through your various safety systems and enable them and disable them i think so i've got the cameras up that won't load right this second uh, you can change and choose literally a specific camera you want to see i should have said this as well so you know you can look out the side Look out the front, look out the back, fold the mirrors. Everything can be done through there. Then for your controls here, your temperature control, you literally slide, slide it to change the temperature on a touch sensor there. Um, this is a digital display as well for your main uh, climate controls. And literally it's everything. Seat ventilation, seat heating, the fan speeds. Um, you can use the physical toggles as well windscreen, um, rear window, USB port down there, cup holders, um, the iDrive controller, the driving modes. We can talk more about the driving later on. In the armrest, you've got induction charging. So let's say with the uh, key fob, I'm just getting it out of my pocket, for example, that would go in here or your mobile phone. And you can see the blue light that's just come on that says it's charging. Um, that all works effortlessly in there. This is just the front of the car. We haven't even got to the rear yet. And there is so much to show you. Heated steering wheel button, the paddles naturally on the back. I mean, it's just ridiculous and different driving modes. Well, of course, if we go into sport, make it go red. And it sounds so good. That's a V12 sound, proper sound. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So let me leave the engine running and uh, head round to the back and show you some of the functionality in the rear of this car where it continues to just be absurdly ridiculous. Past yet another V12 badge and while I open the door actually there's a badge here that says carbon core to save weight in the car, bits of carbon fibre used in lots of different places. But in here, ah, oh, luxuriousness. So my favourite button is this one the executive lounge seating, which will move the front seat um, as far away as possible. It will tilt it forwards, push it to the front, lower the headrest, raise the screen, lower the footrest, and simultaneously it's sliding my seat into the relaxation position. Um, I haven't even got as far as showing you this tablet and everything else that we've got in here. It's nice to have air conditioning vents right there, but it literally tucks everything. You can see the headrest is folding forwards. That rear screen is going to tuck up. There we go. One thing at a time, this is absurd. It's like watching a robot in action back here. There we go. And the footrest is opening up. 
and that's nice and padded. Take your shoes off, put them on, relax, or just for the moment with shoes. There we go, nice and comfortable. Chilling back here, just imagine. You could work in here properly, you know, nice and calm, chilled. You've got a table in the uh, armrest here. Literally, you can open this up like so. Which way does it go? There we go. I've got my table, got my laptop. There's a telephone in here. You know, if you want to take calls on a handset so the person in front isn't necessarily listening to you, that's in a huge storage bucket. Um, wi Fi, Bluetooth. This car is completely equipped with everything. This is this is a lot of storage back here. Um, close that down, open up this section, look back here, where you have literally a fridge. There is the fridge in the boot, where you could have, you know, your champagne bottles just chilling in there, or whatever else you may want. Um, you can see that's on multiple different settings that you can use. That is mega cool oh that's nice really nice finish look at these pillows look at those comfortable soft lovely and these back seats have massaging as well they have everything the front has i feel completely like i'm at home or something in here let's fold the table back away pop that back into the armrest easy to do then you've got the tablet should we play with that next or should we start pressing buttons for the blinds you can obviously put the rear window blind you can do the passenger door blind Ah, oh, and even on the rear little window as well, it does. It's a little bit protected from the uh, light then in there. You've got the sunroof, the panoramic roof, front and rear, which clearly has some pretty strong tinting, which is what you'd need out here. Close that again. Is there anything this car does not have? Seriously, absolutely anything. I mean, if we go back to, oh wait, that's massager. Yep, I can feel that. I can feel that in my back. Okay, then you've got, I think this returns the seat to the normal position. Yep, there we go, doing its thing. So seat controls also have massive amounts of movement. The backrest, the headrest, the base, um, the lumbar support. If you press this, you have the ability to control the front seat. So you could, you know, literally move the front seat away if you wanted it out of the way. Um, what's this? Oh yeah, that's the mechanical arm for the table. Um, the display panel here, turn it on is almost a repeat of the front entertainment system. So you have everything, literally everything, controlled through the tablet in here. Um, I yeah, I don't really know where to begin. I'm just letting the seat still do its thing and folding back. Um, and then if I go into controlling it, we can slide it forward to give myself a little bit more legroom back here. I've still got my massager on. <laughs> Let's just turn that off for the moment. Memory seats, I think that's pretty much a given, isn't it, back here? Oh, nice airflow basically everywhere around here. And then in here, I haven't shown you that, press that, and the tablet is handed to you and presented. And then, you know, it's just a, a normal nice tablet system, but wirelessly you can change the interior lighting, the colors. Okay, so we can make it blue, although maybe blue doesn't, yep, there we go, I can see you. this is, change doesn't necessarily work against the uh, the red green is completely out there maybe we go with that so you've got the lighting options what else do we have Ooh, not quite sure what it's doing but I like it it's very cool different levels of lighting different aspects that you can illuminate back to home some protection so you can close all oh yep that that did what it was supposed to do don't even need to use the buttons on the car open all back to home seats you can control the seats and set the memory from a tablet this is crazy wow you can control the massaging functionality vitality program where it will do lots of things in harmony to make your life uh, a little bit more comfortable just moving this so that we've got fewer reflections on it for you climate control Yep, nice display for all of the settings on there. Oh wait, hold on. Ionic. Ooh, that looks fancy. Ionization. And then you have fragrances, if you want to distribute fragrances around your car to make it smell a little bit nicer. Then you have the obvious, the media control. I suppose that's the most uh, given thing. Telephone in rear, driving information. So this will bring up, I guess, what we're doing at the moment in terms of speed, fuel economy, and the like direction we're driving goodness me it just goes on and on settings screen standby settings uh, reset it and then apps where you have a full Android tablet so connected to the internet to do 
everything else that we haven't yet shown you that you can do. This is magical. Who would ever think you'd have that kind of thing in the car? And then it latches itself back in, turn it off, or head back to the BMW app. Wow, that is crazy. So back here then, wow, what else can I, what else can I really show you? The sound system is incredibly good. You'd expect that, I guess. Um, lighting up here, uh, different kind of lighting, of course, depending where you want it pointing around. You've got uh, mirrors, illuminated mirrors for the rear as well, and for the rear passengers. This is just, this is just absolutely off the charts, all of this gizmology that you can play with. And you've got a full replication of the climate control from the front, more storage um, down here. Oh, headphone ports, um, a CD slot, USB ports, more ports for absolutely everything. 12 volt socket. My word, my absolute word. I think I've probably exhausted most of the uh, elements of the rear of this car now. Let's head round back to the front and just play a little bit more with some of the settings in here. Uh, the green lighting is still on. It looks a little bit peculiar against the against the red. Ah, um, oh, the remote control is, yes. Oh, it's in my pocket, so I, the car knew that I took the remote to the back. Okay, it's recognized it now. So let's go with here to the main menu where you have these tiles that you can scroll through. You can change the different um, displays and things. You can actually move them. So if you press and hold, you can shuffle the order to have them however you want them. Media, communication, navigation, connected drive, my vehicle. Just go into all of these. And there are so many settings and things that you can change and play with and you know, set up your sport displays here. Um, how does this work? There we go. So you can drive it showing your horsepower and torque and what you're currently using. Give it a little blip, you can see that in real time, what you're pressing, what it's doing. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just ludicrous. Absolutely loaded to the brim with everything. Bowers and Wilkins, you can open and close the boot from down here, bonnet catch down there in the driver's footwell. I mean, I'm just clicking around, pressing buttons. This thing is mega. I think that's been quite a detailed look around it and we've not even gone anywhere yet. Let's take it for a short little drive and see what it's like on the roads. It's smooth, it's calm, it's effortless, it's very quiet. There's a small sense of the V12 in the background and I must say at this stage that I did drive the M760LI just around the block last time I was here. So I had maybe five minutes in the car, but this is more of an actual opportunity to understand what it's like. And it's the first BMW that's ever had air suspension, so it's very, very gentle. It has a number of features that I suppose are shared with Rolls-Royce, like for example, the gearbox being controlled by GPS navigation. So it knows if you're driving on a nice, gentle, smooth road, or if you're driving on a mountain pass, and it will control the gearbox relative to what kind of road it thinks you're going to be driving on, which, I guess it takes a moment to get the head around, but it's quite frankly ridiculous in terms of how much control it has. Now we're about to go over a very nasty speed bump and the car should be able to be quite smooth over it. Yep, no jarring, no massive bumps. And then if I was to put my foot down, you can hear a little bit of the V12 there. It makes a thunderous racket, even through the windows, which are incredibly well insulated. That's why we don't really hear anything from the outside world right now. So you've got a number of different driving modes. You can put it into sport, for example, or into adaptive. In sport, you've got multiple different sport modes, if that makes sense. You can pull the gear stick um, again into sport mode, uh, which you do by going that way. There we go, that's sport. Slightly fruitier, or you can use the paddles and get even more. Yes, it's not going to be the most aggressive shift in the world, but I think that's the character of the car. This thing's about the luxuriousness, the effortless comfort, but with some capability, should you choose to put your foot down, and we're in the city centre here, so this isn't necessarily the best place, but I love that noise that you get carrying through into the cabin. Then when you do put it back into normal or into comfort mode, completely calm the car back down, it does its thing, changes some settings, and then it's just relaxed and, and gentle. And that's, if you're being chauffeur driven, exactly what you want. I think it's a statement piece being at the very top of the line, the M version coming out of BMW M to refine the driving dynamics and make it a car that you can enjoy both ways round. And here, it just makes so much sense. 
clicks, it ticks the boxes. When you do then find an empty bit of road and you put your foot down, it moves. This car is fast, really, really fast. Well, over 600 horsepower, so it should be, and because it has X-Drive, all-wheel drive, it obviously gets on a move incredibly quick as well. You can, well, four-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive is a constant ongoing discussion at the moment, but four-wheel drive offers quicker pace off the line, quicker pace out of corners, more stability in bad weather conditions. There basically isn't really any argument against it if you can still make the car fun. And that's what BMW seem to be very good at, particularly with the new M5 uh, that's going to be coming very soon as well. So looking forward to more with that. But you drive it, you know, the suspension does its thing. You can feel the car stays rather flat, although you do sense the weight and scale of it, so to speak. Obviously, it's a big, heavy car. It's long. It's got a big V12. That adds some weight. You can't really avoid that. But overall, it's quite enjoyable. Let's just see if we can find somewhere else to just get out on a slightly stre straighter stretch. Here we go, back onto a main road then, up towards the red line. It has that very distinct V12 engine note to it. It's a bit of a busy road here, unfortunately. Middle of the day, I suppose. We've got many lanes, we can explore across them. Up through a second gear, there's a little yellow shift indicator as well as you get up towards the top of the red line. That indicates to upshift, you see that there? Going round. This'll do, won't it? This is all right. So as well as being an awesome car to drive, it also has tons of driving tech. So adaptive cruise control, which is that. Cruise control activated. Um, control the speed and just slow it down slightly. Um, lane assistance, so if I press that button, the car will now keep itself in the lane, turning the steering wheel for me. So I don't have to do anything, it's doing it like magic, wonderful. That did the job perfectly round one very rare corner. There aren't that many of them here. We also have a button down here for night vision. Look there on the central screen. So if you're driving in the dark, you could have night vision loaded up. Um, heat sensing, of course. What else do we have? Pre-safe things, so all sorts of technology stuff for making sure that the car is, you know, if it predicts there's gonna be an incident in front of you, or um, apply the brakes on your behalf. Adaptive cruise control is it's kind of a very early level of autonomy in terms of letting the car drive for you, isn't it? Um, it's funny, even going a straight line, I can feel it just gently keeping the car backwards and forwards straight. What does this do? Pressing as I go. That's the uh, distance to the car in front. So, yeah, this thing is utterly ridiculous in terms of technology. It is completely insane the amount of features it packs into one car. I, 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 I think I'm probably only touching on the surface. Of course, there's all the engineering side of things that we haven't even remotely spoken about. Just the, the gizmos and the gadgets that you can interact with in here. We're back at Abu Dhabi Motors, so let's use the car's self-parking functionality. So you can search for a space, find us a space car. There's one, in theory, just on the right-hand side here. Some parking bays, come on. There we go, okay, so it's detected it. Indicate right to tell it what I want to do. I've got an option of diagonal parking or parallel parking. We're gonna be diagonal here. So I select that. Now, this is a trust exercise. There is a button here that you press and hold, but you don't touch the pedals and you don't touch the steering wheel. You let the car do its thing. So release the brake and I'm just holding a button. I'm not touching pedals at all. The car is doing everything here. The car's in control. It's taken an interesting line. This is quite a tight space for it to have to work by. Okay, so we're gonna go forwards. Oh God, this is petrifying. We're gonna to head towards that three series. Are you sure about this? Uh, yeah, okay, we're good. It's like, I don't know. Oh, it's gone overcooked it so it can go back again and just get us perfectly. Oh, like, are, are you serious? Did the parking complete, vehicle secured, it's in park again. That's it, that's all you have to do. We're gonna go back around the front. This is just ridiculous, the technology in this thing. <laughs> Going back to the key fob, the other thing to show you, if I activate remote parking, it's connecting to the car. Give it one second for that to connect. It lets you know it lights up green. Start it up. Engine will start. 
I'm gonna picture the scenario here. You know, we're gonna be able to move the car forwards and backwards. We've seen a little bit of how that works. But, oh, move closer to the vehicle. Sorry, car, didn't like me doing that. What I want you to imagine right now is if there was, say, an object, like a person who's just on his phone, you know, unaware of what's going on and just blissfully, you know, unaware of anything really, and you were to move the car forwards like this, it would steer out of the way. It's detected the blockage, complete blockage, so it's come to a standstill. But if that blockage was ever so slightly further backwards, like that, maybe a touch further, we'd be able to continue. It goes around, turns around, folds the mirror in, and avoids a collision at all. Just like that, magic control. The uh, pedestrian did not get impacted by the car, and then we can, oh, uh, how do you do it? Slide it backwards again, puts the reversing light on, releases the handbrake, and this is still just as trippy as it always was. <laughs> oh, I left the vehicle too far away. Anyway, I think the point is uh, mostly proven here. Engine stop. And it will turn off. I started this video talking about what a gizmo overload the 760 Li is, the M760 Li, and I think it's fair to say that's pretty accurate, but we're parked up now between the two other cars here at the front. The twilight purple it is on this side, which I think is a lovely, lovely specification for the car. And then on the other side, the chestnut bronze. Uh, not necessarily my taste as much, and the Imola Red of the car that we've been driving. One other thing I want to show you though, in the kidney grills at the front, it has active aerodynamic flaps. So these flaps you see are actually open if the engine is on. So if I come around and actually do that, although I could in theory start it from the key as well. Let's just, uh, oops, let's just start it up. Get the engine running. And come back around the front and I can show you these specifically. The flaps are open now. So for cooling into the radiators, they open up when you're driving or depending on the efficient dynamics and what it's up to. I'm also going to open up the engine bay here, which you do with the double pull in BMW style. So there's no catch, it's just a double pull, soft close on the door, obviously. And then you lift up the bonnet. Not much you can see, 6.6 .6 litre V12 up there, 610 horsepower, 800 newton meters, and some pretty monstrous performance uh, numbers and figures for a car of this size and weight, but drop that back down. Oh, that didn't close. Click. Click. And there we have it. The M760 Li in all of its gadgetry glory. Off for now. What else can I show you about this crazy car? X-Drive, naturally, the all-wheel drive system motorized boot. I suppose that's not a huge surprise. The fridge does impact on the luggage space you've got back here. But there's a decent amount of, amount of room for my uh, bag that I'm just shuffling out of the way. But you can fit plenty of things back there and then power fold tailgate to close. It has the latest uh, lighting technology. So around the front BMW laser lights, which have the matrix system. So imagine you're driving at night and you have a full field of vision you know in front of you the lights are on it sees a light coming towards you that bit would go dark and not be illuminated but everything around would still be bright it is a magnificent system this car's finished with a few of the satin chromed accents the dual tone wheels it's accessorized with the carbon fiber mirror cap it has the boot lid lip spoiler these are options and Abu Dhabi Motors specify their cars like I said at the very beginning in a very very nice way always Bespoke configuration. I mean, look at the M4 here with the M Performance rear wing on the back. Um, changed exhaust system for sure. Um, just everything, as you can see from the uh, carbon louvres on the bonnet, done in a very high way. But what a fun outing that has been. This car is officially insane. It is so over the top in terms of functionality. And I've only, I guess, scratched on the surface. I'm sure there are other things you guys might even know that I haven't 
tested out today. But it's a big thanks from me to Abu Dhabi Motors for having me along today. Do go check out my full video walking around this ginormous place, including more special configurations of BMW. UM fans are going to want to see that. Also the Rolls Royces that they have here too, including a very pink and white one. That's quite intriguing. Um, but this car has been awesome fun today. It's very, very windy, so I hope that hasn't been a problem on the video. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Check out all the latest videos. Click the bell button down below to get the newest notifications of new videos as and when they go live. But that's it for me from today at Abu Dhabi Motors. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.